And so many of us become mothers and try to define ourselves as mothers when we haven't defined ourselves as women. And so many of us as women think that the way we need to define ourselves is by becoming a mom. The key is woman. What is the anatomy of a woman? And how do we define ourselves as women? Because whether we give birth to children or not, all women are mothers. We birth ideas. Everything we say out of our mouth can come into being. How we stand in the world, we're birthing all the time. But you and I both know that there are women who have children in their homes, and they say that is beautifully put in that young Van Zandt way. But they believe that womanhood, 49% of the survey, womanhood is somehow linked to motherhood. By the way, men are never asked that question. I know that. But we ask each other this question if we're being honest here. Well, again, that's an old way of thinking. And it used to be that women had to stay home. They couldn't go outside and work. It used to be that women had to wear horses and, you know, chastity belts. So <laughs> we get to create how we're defining it in this way in time. And again, uh, every woman understood that she had two wounds, the one in her pelvic area and the one in the middle of her head. This is a wound. And what did we begin to use our words to birth the things that we want and really understand that who we are as women, who we are as a divine energy and divine being, we're birthing all the time. And we don't, we can choose how to define ourselves as women and as moms. I want to bring our panel back in, Mallory, Kimberly, Michelle and Diane. And you know, you know, we have a very civil and peaceful conversation, but we know that it gets real judgy. I mean, the, the two moms here happen to be moms who work in the home. I've seen moms who work out of the home judge moms like this. And then we yeah. have two, you know, beautiful women here who decided right now, or maybe never on the journey of child. We know these conversations get heated between friends who are women when you start, you know, poking at things, why do we still fight over this? Because we do. Well, not to file, most of us are men in skirts, meaning that we live our lives based on the parameters and the definitions and the restrictions that men have laid upon us. And what we are given an opportunity to do right now is we get to redefine that. We get to redefine who we are, how we stand, how we be, what we stand with, on, and for. And that's what the new century, the 21st century, is all about. But it's going to take us being willing to lay down some of those learned behaviors, bad behaviors, and some of the beliefs and restrictions that men put upon us to keep them safe. Someone asked me how I define womanhood, and I didn't know how to define it. I, I said I don't have a definition to it. Yes. And then I like, maybe I'm supposed to. Well, I think that's the problem, Tam. So many of us define who we are as women by what we do, as opposed to recognizing and understanding how we be. Now, I'm not going to give you a definition. I think that that is a homicide for every woman watching this. How do you define woman? What is the anatomy of a woman? And what makes us so powerful and beautiful and life-giving and different? Mom or not mom? And it's important because even as moms, when we don't have our woman defined, it's hard for us to initiate our daughters into womanhood. Instead, we teach them what to do. We don't teach them how to be. So oh. I'm not going to find it. That's one more. I just got goosebumps on that one. You know, Mallory, I asked Michelle, what will she do after the kids are gone? And my team said, well, what about Mallory? What about Kimberly? Do you think about life if you don't? There's a Bonnie Raitt song, it's one of my favorite songs, Scared to Run Out of Time. And, mm -hmm. you know, I know we don't like to say the biological clock ticking and all those things. I was through multiple rounds of IVF at 49, and I'm now a 100 year old mom. But it does tick on you, it does. And so, Mallory, do you think about what if you decide and time is not on your side? Yeah, absolutely. This is actually a huge thought that's always in the, it used to be always in the forefront of my mind, but I saw that it started to drive some decisions to stay in relationships that had reached past their expiration point. And so at that point, I had to accept that, you know what, whether motherhood, as far as raising children, as far as if that happens for me or doesn't happen for me, what's meant to be will be. 
and I need to stop putting this pressure because that pressure only causes stress, which is actually blocking me from the woman experience mm. that I'm meant to be having right now. I love that. And Kimberly, you have made the point of something I said before I had Moses. I was the best and am the best aunt in the world. They are my children and were my children. And everything that I'm pouring into Moses, I poured into Isaiah, Maya, Gianna, and Layla. And that girl, it takes a village. It takes all kinds of women. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I do want to reiterate, Kim, and that I got enormous respect for the work of motherhood, especially at this historic moment. I think that I'm probably not meant to be the primary adult, but I can be a heck of a good backup adult. <laughs> and I think that my goal at this point in time and moving forward can be to alleviate some of the burdens off of the other mothers in my life.
Um, so to me, I feel like womanhood, it doesn't, I mean, it is a motherly sense because I'm 26, but if I was 24, I probably would have did it. Mm -hmm. Y'all would still like find myself still being selfish, but I have more confidence. I know I can speak up for myself. I know right from wrong. So I kind of, I made that decision to say like, I see you're struggling as a parent, but I can help you out and take that pressure off and step up as a mother figure. Um, yeah. 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 As a woman that is headed to her 50s, without kids, without ever being married, I dare somebody to tell me that I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I've gone through all of it, like every, yes, yeah. every bit of it. The happiness, the, the joy of it, the beauty of it. My nieces and nephews definitely did, like went above and beyond what the auntie role was supposed it to be. It takes an emotional toll on It definitely does. <laughs> and then when they got to me, then I became everybody's auntie. <laughs>
I am very not, I don't I work from home and stuff like that, but like, um, I mean, even today, perfect example, I am so busy that I do have days where I'm like, I do not want to put on a single thing of makeup. I'm going to throw on whatever I can find. So um, there's a, I have let go of that, like in the last two years or so as I've been busier, like even like getting dressed up or putting on makeup or whatever being like, I even try to catch myself saying like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I can put this on or whatever. And just like, I'm still me regardless. I just didn't have to dress if I had makeup on or anything like that. So just, I guess, um, kind of just going to get it. That's part of like, going to get it is you don't have time to always do those things, so. Um, I would say you can prove it. And I personally don't think A lot of people would consider feel like you should suppress your opinion sometimes. Of course, you know, as you evolve, you know how to do that in the right setting and the right times and stuff like that. But I've actually been there, like, you know, little kickbacks and stuff where you have male and female, and they'll kind of convey that. And when we're having a group conversation or something, that that's something that they find that's not attractive. You know, a woman who's too opinionated or too assertive or something like that. But a lot of times there, too, it's a good match. You know what I mean? It's not so Well, first I have trash battling, I don't want to do that. <laughs> 